Pints with Jack. Season 4, episode 102. Season finale, part 1. Welcome, everyone. Pints with Jack is your weekly C.S. Lewis podcast, where David, Andrew, and I break down and discuss the works of C.S. Lewis. This season, we eavesdropped on Screwtape Letters, listened to his toast, traveled to Narnia with Jill and Eustace, and spoke a lot of wonderful and spoken to a lot of wonderful guests. However, today we begin wrapping up season four with our season finale. And it's episode 102. I think just hearing David say that at the beginning, holy cow, the fact that it's been a long journey. <laughs> yes, it has. It's definitely been a long season. Uh, our listeners are getting their money's worth. They are. And it's been a while since we all recorded together. And so um, I think David's just been pumping out a bunch of after hour episodes one at a time. And I just see them come out real time. I'm like, man, does this guy like have any free time? Is his wife still happy? Is he, is he <laughs> still there? Uh, but no, what is everyone up to? Well, when life is crazy, I just say add more stuff. <laughs> uh, so we are now moved to Wisconsin. Uh, there is no baby outside of the womb at the time of recording, but that will probably have changed by the time this episode comes out. Ooh, uh, it's all terribly exciting. We, yeah. we went from a one-bedroom apartment to a massive house. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what happens when you leave San Diego. You can actually afford houses, <laughs> and they actually have space, a thing called square footage. This is true. Well, David, you uh, Walter tells me that, um, or told me that, Lewis's motto was "When in doubt, give more," and so that's certainly the motto for the after hours episodes. So, <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Um, well, what have you been up to, Andrew? I just got back from uh, from uh, several months in Florida, where I did my hospital internship. So we're back on the campus of Virginia Theological Seminary where uh, it's late August as we speak, and I'm about to start my senior year uh, of seminary. So I have my uh, Latin English Aquinas right behind me and and uh, several other <laughs> books. Um, I'm also finishing up my Tolkien class for Northwind Seminary. Um, and in doing that, have been making some really exciting discoveries. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how these papers turn out. During our trip up, I got to visit with Crystal Hurd and also with uh, Rob Duncan, the the, um, the head of Northwind Seminary. Um, and we visited uh, near Crystal also lives a, a fellow named Reggie Weems, a marvelous guy, has three masters, two doctorates, and is working on a third doctorate in Northwind Seminary and has become the world's expert on Lizzie Endicott. Uh, C.S. Lewis's nurse, nice. and also uh -huh. the the expert on the chronology of when Lewis changed his name from Clive to Jax. Um, and so Reggie has had a lot of fun digging into all of that stuff. So, um, <laughs> yep. And then uh, I'll be uh, I'll be writing, um, Lord willing, uh, a chapter on C.S. Lewis as philosopher, a chapter on Lewis's kind of uh, approach to, to to life in general, the clarity and charity. Um, and then just said yes to the Perichoresis Journal. Uh, to join some of the philosophy folks from Houston Baptist University, and I'll write uh, an article about my uh, my Oxford Lewis Society paper, looking at Lewis and, and spiritual autobiography. So, so lots of uh, lots of good stuff coming up this semester. So we're kind of finishing off some things, catching our breath, and then uh, and then starting the school year. How about Matt? What's going on with Matt? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the big thing since we last chatted was my trip to. England yes. and Rome. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, I had booked that by the grace of God back in February when flights were really cheap and I didn't really know what was going to happen, what was going to play out, where was COVID going to be. But I'm like, you know what? These are just dirt cheap flights. And I have a feeling sometime this summer it's going to be okay. And it really did turn out okay. But because of that, you, you couldn't really plan much. And the Delta variant coming up, I wasn't sure if my flight would get canceled. And so, I just, I, I kind of let the Holy Spirit guide it. And I thought it was going to be about the Oxford kind of going back to there. But in reality, Oxford was the least part of the entire trip. Mm -hmm. Ended up raining every day. And I ended up, ended up having to plug into some work, unfortunately, some work stuff backed up. And the real beauty of it ended up being uh, Rome. And it was just stunning. I went to so many basilicas. It was a really, it was a very spiritual trip. I had gone to mass and adoration every day in London, every day in, um, even in Oxford and then in, uh, Rome. 
and just going to St. Peter's tomb and being there and the, Hmm. the, you go under the Basilica and the historical evidence she gives for this. I was like, Holy cow. Um, and so that brought me to tears actually. And doing math. So you did the Scavi tour? Yeah, I did the Scavi tour. Uh, went to probably 10 different basilicas, did the seven church Camino. Uh, it was just, it was a really beautiful time. And so it was, it was a blessing and it ended up uh, really just doing some resets that I really was looking forward to. And it was great. Mm. And then I have a friend in London who taught me uh, something about Narnia, actually. So I'm on a walk with a friend in London. And for a second, I thought I might actually be cool here on this episode and be the only one that knows this, but I guess I was the last one to know this. <laughs> and, uh, you should listen I'm to walking. Pies with Jack. You'd have learned this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking with my buddy. And he, he works at KKR in London and he's like, yeah, there's this person that works there. And, and I was asking her where she's from and she goes, I'm from Narnia. And, <laughs> and then he's like, Narnia, what are you talking about? No, Narnia. Like, see, it's Narnia. And he was so confused because he has no idea. <laughs> and she goes, you know, the place in Italy that he named it after. And he thought he was so excited to tell me about it. And sure enough, he was right. I didn't know, <laughs> even though I was Pines with Jack. And I was like, ooh, I wonder if David knows this. <laughs> and so listeners, I told them this right before we got on here. And I said, you guys know what Narnia was named after? And they're both like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, so, I've actually I'm seen uh, Lewis's map of, of Italy in Walter Hooper's house, where Lewis, uh, as a young young person, underlined the word, the name of the town, Narni. Um, so, yeah, but that's that's I've never I've never actually met an actual Narnian. Um, so good for you. <laughs> I should have said it that way. So I am one removed from a Narnian. <laughs> You're the only <laughs> one, one among separation. us, I think, who's met an, an actual Narnian. I, I think David, David Qu- David's quip was a little unfair. You should listen to Pints with Jack. 102 episodes <laughs> for a pity's sake. That's, <laughs> That's quite really a challenge. Good. I will. <laughs> let, let me tell you this, David. I will do anything you want, a request. If you can tell me what episode, what season, what episode that was brought on right now. I'm sure we've mentioned it multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> More just to see if your memory's there. You had a chance to, to really take advantage of that. Nah, nah. Uh, although, although you say that you're only one removed from a Narnian, just before we've recorded, actually, we just hit record, and then suddenly Andrew shouts out, there's a Ford in the garden, and just disappears. <laughs> uh, and it was a few tense minutes when he eventually came back. He didn't go to this Fawn's Cave fatigue, because I was pretty sure that's going to end badly. Um, but yeah, it was just funny, after our conversation about Narnia, suddenly Andrew shouting out, there's a Fawn in the garden, and runs off. <laughs> well, there's that. I had no idea what to expect. I thought I thought you were playing a joke or something. I was like, "What's going on right now? Is this real? Is this happening?" I didn't either. We have a group text for the uh, for the four different apartments in my hallway in my stairway, and um and somebody said, "There's that fawn outside." Yeah, I've seen it before, and so I jumped on the group text and I said, "Well, I know it's not that kind of fawn, but dibs on calling him Tumnus." <laughs> so <laughs> that's his name. No, Tumnus's for tea wouldn't have been bad, but if Tumnus served me Turkish delight, I would have really been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny that you saw a fawn because where we now live in Wisconsin, we actually get deer in our back garden. So I, I, I said to my wife the other day, it's like, oh, it's just like we're back at Maudlin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I spent a, a Thanksgiving in Wisconsin once, and evidently the hunters can be a little overzealous. And so during deer season, the, the farmers paint in big orange letters on the side of their cattle, cow, <laughs> so that they, <laughs> they don't get shot. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so how are you liking Wisconsin so far? Oh, it's beautiful. We, we also moved at a good time of year, so it wasn't too shocking moving from San Diego to Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, but it's just gorgeous and green, and I love all of the different kinds of trees. Ah, lovely. Well, and all that well, green. We'll ask you again in February. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, at the end of January, I'll be flying back to San Diego for my buddy Joe's wedding. So we will uh, get our fill of the sun and Mexican food and fish tacos. Ah, lovely. Well, and you've gonna you're gonna have a beautiful autumn uh, once uh, in a couple of weeks. So everything green up there is gonna go just gorgeous. So, well, should we jump into the quote of the week, gentlemen? Absolutely. Let's do it. Since we're wrapping up screw tape letters, I obviously had to take this from the screw tape letters, and it's the more contextual one of one of the more famous lines that I really loved from it. But 
a chastity or honesty or mercy, which yields to danger, will be chaste or honest or merciful only on conditions. Pilate was merciful till it became risky. Hmm. Hmm. There's just a lot of there's a lot of wisdom in that from which is why I selected it. Yeah, I felt a little pressure to try to select something that encapsulates the entire book. And I <laughs> thought, you know, you know what, this this doesn't quite do that, but the main themes of virtue and habits, staying consistent and despite feelings is really a key theme in this book. And so to be able to just have that indirectly in here, I think it's beautiful. And everyone can remember Pilot was merciful until it became risky. Mm. Yeah. I think that was a really good choice. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I did it two minutes before we started recording. <laughs> I know. I've been checking the document all afternoon. Has he added it yet? Has he added it yet? <laughs> well, the thing was, Listen, Dave, of course, you could open it anywhere and put your finger down and probably find a quotable line. So uh, we're pretty safe. Or there. you Google screw tape letter quotes and it's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes Boom. out. Boom. So what yes. are we drinking this week, gentlemen? Why? Well, I, I had a last minute trip to Savannah, so I'm recording... Uh, not in Michigan, but by the grace of God, my old college roommate had McAllen 12. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so Matthew Bush has McAllen 12 neat right now. That's great. What about you, Andrew? I almost I almost pulled that out in honor of you uh, when I saw David's choice. I'm like, oh, maybe I should get Matt's favorite and pour some McAllen 12. But then I realized I had this really big bottle, uh, plastic bottle that had been sitting around for a while. And I need more space on my shelves because I'm hoping to have some new scotch <laughs> soon. Um, and so I poured out the last of my um, the last of my VAT 69 um, that Steve oh, Beebe mm. gave me. So um that's what I'm drinking. It's Fat 69 gold um, and light, so I'm not really sure. But when I go to England next, I'm hoping to bring back some of the real stuff. Well, whenever I decide to stop being lazy and make it to the mailbox, I might have a new set of tasting scotches for ah, us all. Ah, lovely, lovely. Well, tonight it'd that be I've fine been meaning to send for three weeks. So, you know, <laughs> just give it about one more month and it'll show up. Okay. <laughs> Well, Good. I am currently drinking Lafroy. Uh -huh. uh, and with regards to next season, I am planning on mixing things up a little bit and drinking more beer because I'm now in Wisconsin and there are lots of wonderful local beer. So I would like to get a, a little bit more back to our name Pints with Jack. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'm drinking Lagavulin today. And uh, one of my friends, Nathan, he sent me a series of adverts that... that, that um, Oh, sorry, I'm drinking Lafroig. And my friend Nathan, he sent me uh, a, a bunch of adverts that Lafroig used, real quotations of people drinking Lafroig, but they don't sound very pleasing. So one of them is like drinking wet grass, a handful of dirt, and a hint of frog. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I don't like Lafroig, to be honest. Oh, well, okay. I, it's not. I actually wanted to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Elizabeth Fusilier, who a little while ago, she posted a, a photograph on Instagram of two scotch glasses. One of them was named Lafroig 10 and the other McAllen 12. And she added the text saying, I finally got to try these for my birthday and they did not disappoint. I feel like I've been hearing about them forever. Ah. <laughs> so congratulations and happy birthday to Elizabeth. Yeah, lovely. So were these um, thistle glasses that she got? They, they, were, they were physical glasses, yes. Okay, uh, but, thistle but they glasses. Oh, the oh, thistle. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Oh, I, I always call these Glencairn glasses. I hadn't well, heard they them are. called thistle glasses before. Uh, but they're shaped like why. a thistle. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. No, they were the they were the open top okay. uh, Scotch glasses. So is this a Lafroig 10 that you're drinking? It is indeed. Okay. Because you in the show also, notes, David recorded uh, Lagavulin 16. So that's why I didn't choose Lagavulin 16. But, uh, <laughs> but it made its way back. It was going to be that. And then Nathan started sending me all of these adverts. And I <laughs> I just had to switch. Good. Also, Andrew, it's good to know that David is uh, switching to pints next season. So I will make sure I actually give you two thirds of his scotches and only send him a few. <laughs> there you go, lovely. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't need as much now next season. No, so I think I need no. to give you the more of them. This is true. You can just Venmo me the money that I'm going to be spending on beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a giver, so I will gratefully, you know, be the be the you know humble recipient of uh, of such things. So, well, they're really good ones too. I bought them in a store in Oxford. I just walked in and had tons of tasting ones that I have never seen in my really? life. 
Huh. And I and they took my 35 pound suitcase to 55 pounds, and I barely was able to get back. But thankfully, the lady who weighed it said, "I'll let you." <laughs> <laughs> it's scotch for my for my mates. So. That's why I said I'm evangelizing with the scotch man. Absolutely. <laughs> well, congratulations and happy birthday to Elizabeth. And let's get on to a toast. Uh, today is September 28th, and this past Sunday, Sister Natalia and Sister Petra, both former guests of the show. They completed their final vows at their monastery, and in so doing, inaugurated by a nun a beer day. So I would therefore like to toast both of them and their entire community at Christ the Bridegroom Monastery. Cheers. 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 I feel like I should Venmo them some money for a beer day. (laughs) Well, I'll actually put a link in the show notes. More than you do, David. I will put a a link in the show notes if any listeners would like to mail them beer. Uh, I have sent them two pints with Jack glasses uh, to drink this free beer that they're going to get. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. I like the idea of everyone contributing. I think the the, the word buy an anabirde, if you say it right, it sounds like a town in Wales, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, well, and when this episode comes out, we are just a couple of weeks away from um, Malcolm Geit's planned visit to Virginia Theological Seminary. So Malcolm oh, has fun. written some poems for our bicentennial in 2023, 2023, and he's supposed to be visiting the campus. So if, if the COVID restrictions allow, uh, he shall be here and we shall pour him out a dram. In these pints with glass jack, uh, uh, glasses and, uh, and raise a toast to you. <laughs> we swear Andrew just started drinking, guys. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Respect Biggle. Respect Biggle. Respect Biggle. <laughs> Drunk I am not. Well, speaking of, uh, of Sister Petra, a few months ago, um, uh, we received this from Terry Smith. I just read a letter from the nuns at Christ the Bridegroom Monastery in Ohio saying that Mother Natalia and Sister Petra had joined your podcast for an episode in the spring. Sister Petra is a former student of Mark's from Indiana Wesleyan. So Terry and Mark Smith, wonderful friends of mine. I first met Mark at the uh, C.S. Lewis retreat at Camp Allen in Texas uh, in in 2004, I believe. Um, and they'll be, uh, they're returning to Camp Allen. The Lewis Foundation is, um, the first weekend of December to Camp Allen for another retreat. But, uh, but Terry, uh, Terry sent this in. So Sister Petra, former student of, of my friend Mark's, um, Terry goes on to say she was probably in the top three students that Mark has had in his whole teaching career. I was so excited to see that one who is very dear to us connected with you, whose company has been a delight. Blessings on you and your bride. Well, and Terry and Mark uh, graciously provided me a ride from um, from Williams College from the Summer Institute in 2006, and that was the summer I really discovered all of the, the kind of the secrets of till we have faces. So it was great to get an hour with them. And uh, blessings to Terry and Mark. Mm. I love world it when the world is smaller. small. It is. It is. Beat you to it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and when it comes to the Lewis community, I think that there's a a lot of uh, what you to instant friendship there. (laughs) So, well, we've got a handful of things to cover in this episode. We've got a few announcements. We're going to talk through this past season. We're going to read some iTunes reviews. And we're also going to discuss one last piece of screw tape related material. Great. But before we jump into this, uh, a note about Patreon. And before the note about Patreon, uh, just if you guys know, you know, that we, we love doing this podcast, this ministry, we're actually, as we, every season we try to up our game and expand it, both in terms of content, reach, things we're doing. Uh, and Patreon has been a blessing. We've had um, well over a hundred of you guys supporting us on a monthly basis. And that has allowed us to cover all of the costs of the episodes and to be able to push out, you know, all these after hours that David does, he can just record them and boom, send them to the editor. They take care of it, help us ready to post it. And it, it essentially allows David um, and all of us, but he would have been the one editing <laughs> 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 to, to do what we're able to do. And so it's genuinely a blessing. And uh, every month, just a few more people end up helping us. And that's just been fantastic. Uh, and as we go to season five, we're talking about new things to do with video series and new content that we can put out and just continue to spread this. And so thank you all first and foremost. Second, I'm taking over the sending out of stickers and coasters. So if anyone hasn't received their Patreon kickbacks yet, please contact me on Patreon. They might have fallen through the cracks. 
particularly August. This is good to know. I wasn't sure if I was starting in August yet. I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was like season five or if it was August. I was like, all right, I probably have to text David. And I thought to myself, well, I just forgot. Um, <laughs> hey, listeners, so, if, they're, uh, they're, if you're if you're coming, if you're waiting on Matt to send you stickers and coasters, get in line after he sends us scotch. So you know we're, <laughs> we're men of priorities here. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, and we also have had a few people haven't taken advantage of the video chat reward. And so, you know, if you don't want to, that's totally fine. But if you do listen to this, uh, the they're one of my favorite things to actually be able to do when we do these chats. They're just such a blessing. We chat with the people at the top tier and it's always for, you know, 45 minutes, an hour. And uh, David and I are just amazed at how brilliant you guys are. Uh, but lastly, on the Patreon front, we're going to be introducing a new reward for our top tier supporters, and that's the Pine to Jack mug, which seems mm. very fitting. And so we're going to be sending those out during the break before we begin season five. Uh, you know, we have to a little ordering stuff, David, with the move, you know, lot, lots going on. Uh, and so when season five begins, we'll explain how people at lower tiers can purchase them. Boom. That's great. Well, a mug I think is perfectly timely as pumpkin spice, everything is beginning to flood the shelves. <laughs> so need a nice glass of something warm. Hmm. Well, let's look back at season four, since we're on episode 102 at the moment. This has definitely been our longest season thus far, over 100 episodes, and we've worked through the Screwtape Letters, Screwtape Proposes a Toast, and the Silver Chair, and we have spoken to a ton of people. Uh, Andrew, this was your first complete season as co-host. Any thoughts or reactions? You know, I just, I'm so grateful. Kick him off. He's done. Kick him off. <laughs> yeah. I don't want him anymore. Hey, no, That's, no. I, I, wanted, I wanted to air that out in public here. It's Get him my out of here. nightmare. That's my nightmare. <laughs> you know, I've thought about doing a blog or a podcast and... Um, and just the the idea of getting it done, especially with my slothful uh, approach to to things, just uh, so daunting. It's been such a joy, um, and such a pleasure. And you know, to be to be part of something that is of such high quality is is just been a delight. Um, I've been listening. Um, uh, my nephew recommended to Kristen and me. We listened to a little bit on the way home. The um, oh, what is it called? The Friendship Onion. Uh, which is the podcast between Billy Boyd and Dominic Monaghan, the two hobbits, uh, yes. Mary and Pippin from from Lord of the Rings, and their friendliness, uh, you know, it just reminds reminds me of, of of ours. I think our we run a tighter ship than they do, though. So. And that's what I was <laughs> well, thinking. Hobbits David. aren't known for organization. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Um, but as I was thinking about it and thinking about how humbled and on honored I am to be part of this, I thought about this marvelous quote um, from The Four Loves, and I wasn't really planning on leading into next year, but this is what Lewis says about friendship. He says, in a perfect friendship, this appreciative love is, I think, often so great and so firmly based that each member of the circle feels in his secret heart humbled before the rest. Sometimes he wonders what he is doing among there among his betters. And that's certainly how I feel. He is lucky beyond dessert to be in such company, especially when the whole group is together, each bringing out all that is best, wisest, or funniest in all the others. These are the golden sessions. When four or five of us, after a hard day's walk, have come to our inn where our slippers are on, our feet spread out toward the blaze, and our drinks are at our elbows... When the whole world and something beyond the world opens itself to our minds as we talk, and no one has any claim on on or any responsibility for another, but all are free men and equals as if we had first met an hour ago, while at the same time an affection mellowed by the years enfolds us. Life, natural life, has no better gift to give. Who could have deserved it? And, you know, I'm struck mm. by what Kristen said when we recorded our Silver Chair episode. And as soon as we were done and took off our headphones, she's like, so that's why you're always in such a good mood after you talk with Matt and David. <laughs> and I said, yes, that and the scotch. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly the scotch, yes. A respectable co-host. No, it's, it's this great company. <laughs> so. Matt, how about yourself? Any highlights from season four? Yeah, I would say in just overall, it's something that we've already talked about, but I don't really believe it's a coincidence in the slightest that every season God speaks to me through the books and there's always some big thing that's actually impacting my life also outside of it that's really corresponding with whatever Lewis book we're reading. I think the Screwtape Letters and I'm guessing I'm not the only one 
corresponding with a pandemic and a lot of difficulty and a lot of sin and temptation and struggle in that when you don't have access to community and to your spiritual practices and church and all the things that edify you. And so I really believe that it was it was a gift and a blessing to me as a host to be able to go through this book with all of you guys and the listeners and the feedback and uh, the messages. So it wasn't just the message that we were reading in Lewis and communicating to you guys, but it was messages you were coming back to us with that were very nourishing and edifying in a season of life that I would argue a lot of us were not nourished and edified. And so mm-hmm. you know, that would definitely be highlights. And if I had to give like a very specific highlight, it was definitely the episode of David's where we went on the, it was like, I think letter eight or letter nine when they're back to back and you and I were recording about the, just not Lord going back to your old ways, law of undulation, because that was really mm-hmm. a theme that hit me. And when I was in Rome or England, I actually met up with a a uh, person on Twitter uh, who's really, really strong Catholic and just reached out and uh, we ended up grabbing coffee. And uh, I should actually recommended to me St. John Christensen's book, uh, Dark Knight of the Soul. Uh, that's St. John of the Cross. Yeah. That's the one, that guy. Um, and essentially it just said the, uh, it's classic, Matt. I remember 80% of stuff. <laughs> I got uh, one name right, near enough. I got, yeah, <laughs> I got the gist. One wrote in um, Greek, one wrote in Spanish. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Greek um, to Matt. <laughs> oh, damn that might have been the wittiest comment in four seasons. I want a t-shirt that says that. It's all Greek to Matt. <laughs> I do too. I really do too. That's really good. It is all Greek to me, actually. I think I just broke Andrew. Um. Wonderful. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Yes. Sent you on the cross. <laughs> yeah, just just the the theme in that dark night of the soul. In the beginning of our journey, we we receive constellations. And those constellations are very intentional, but then we go through uh, that period that really forms us. And I thought that was, I, I didn't really realize that's kind of what you had said to me, David, in the Law of Undulation. And I was so focused on wanting to go back to my constellations in life, which would be like the 2015, 16, 17 period. Like, I just want those constellations, Jesus, because, you know, life was a lot easier when I had spiritual constellations constantly pouring into me. Hmm. And uh, that's not how, it's not meant to be that way every single day. And so... Yeah, I would say that for me was like a big highlight of just that message and that time. And so it just couldn't have been better. And you know, it's the perfectly, you know, God is telling you this book is perfect when a priest tells you for penance that I should probably read the screw tape letters <laughs> as I'm going through the screw tape letters as a go host. And so, and then That's when great. I told him, oh yeah, I've read it. He goes, well, read it slowly. <laughs> and I said, only if you knew. <laughs> have you met David Bates? Because he makes me do that. <laughs> I need well, to get I some Pints with Jack cards printed just so that the next season when the priest tells you to read the four loves, you can just slide the card underneath the grill <laughs> in the confessional. Here it is. I got. I did my pre-penance already. Well, I just <laughs> oh, wanted to add too that one of the highlights, um, I did my, my chaplain, uh, hospital chaplaincy. And so last summer after I did my, my summer internship uh, at a parish, I got a line from my uh, great aunt's prayer book uh, in Hebrew. Um, that's, it says thy loving kindness. Um, and so that was a commemoration of part of my seminary journey. And this year when I got done with my hospital chaplaincy, I knew that I wanted a Canterbury cross on my right wrist. And so our listener, Brittany White, uh, helped me design this. And, uh, it's a cross that I actually saw at Canterbury Cathedral. And so I'm, I'm delighted by the idea of someday soon, perhaps, please God, giving somebody communion and having them see the cross. And in fact, my little three-year-old niece, uh, right after I got it done, she said, what is that? Why did you do that? And I said, well, this is the cross. Do you know what happened on the cross? No, the cross is where Jesus died for us. And so I've already mm-hmm. gotten to um, uh, to preach the gospel um, through it and was grateful not only for my iconographer, Christine Hales, who started it for me, but Brittany White spent hours uh, just helping me out. And it feels it helps me to feel connected uh, to, uh, to a number of things. And so I'm grateful to Pints with Jack for that hookup too. <laughs> well, for myself, uh, this past season, I, I was really pleased with Barfield Month hmm. because Barfield is somebody who I've always been intrigued by, didn't feel like I understood him at all. And just speaking for myself, I really enjoyed Barfield Month and I think I learned a lot and I had a lot of stuff cleared up for me. Uh, and it's just been lovely to find more Barfield scholars popping up in my life since then. 
I recently recorded the episode with Dr. Stephen Thorson, and he was another person that sort of popped up on my radar, and there have been quite a few others that have uh, appeared since. So uh, that was that was that was personally just very satisfying. But I think the main thing I got out of this season was I've just spent a lot more time thinking about screw tape and mm. thinking about how good things get twisted. Mm -hmm. And I actually recently started uh, a work by Evagrius of Pontus. He was a 4th century father. And it's actually called Talking Back, a monastic handbook for combating demons. Mm. And it's, you know, it's, it's not as funny as the screw tape letters. But I do keep finding echoes in his advice that Lewis has presented under the form of satire. Mm. Uh, and the other thing that jumped out at me recently I was listening to The Prancing Pony. So that's a Tolkien podcast. It was episodes 217 and 218. And they were talking about the scene where Gandalf and the others are at Isengard trying to talk Saruman down from the tower. Mm. Uh, uh, on this, if you've only watched the movies, you need to see the extended edition to to get this scene, um, at least in its fullness. And they were talking about the way that Saruman tried to manipulate them and bring them over to his side. And it, it just made me wonder, is Saruman Tolkien's screw tape? Hmm. Hmm. And I will be reading my son, The Lord of the Rings, over the coming year. And so I'm going to get a, a chance to, <laughs> to test out that hypothesis as I, as I read the whole thing from cover to cover. Ah, oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. And this was actually also the season where Premier Christian Radio launched their own podcast on C.S. Lewis with Alistair McGrath. And it was actually lovely to see the way that our two podcasts can coexist together. You know, that, that, we, that we're each trying to do something a little bit different. And uh, as a whole, the C.S. Lewis community gets blessed. You know, the idea of a rising tide raising all ships. Yeah. For those who don't know, Alistair McGrath is an Oxford professor, um, I think a professor of religion and science. And mm -hmm. he was an Irishman and an atheist and a scientist and converted and is an Anglican priest, uh, wrote um, in some ways the one of the definitive biographies of Lewis. And when I made my discovery about early prose joy, his biography suggesting that the two conversions were closer together as I proved in that manuscript, um, his biography had just come out. And so I reached out to him and he was incredibly friendly and generous and helpful. And I met him in person uh, a couple of times. And so if you don't know who Alistair McGrath is, um, his biography of Lewis is good. His intellectual world of C.S. Lewis um, is also a, a, a really good get. Um, and then uh, as we move forward, uh, the uh, the next class that I'm about to take at Northern Seminary is a Charles Williams class, but after that it'll be a Barfield class, and so um, and if we ever want to get Owen Barfield on here, um, have we had Barfield on? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, the grandson. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Wonderful guy. So yeah, I didn't we think didn't that we were challenging. <laughs> no, that was after too many pints with Jack. <laughs> so. Well, before we wrap up talking about season four, do you guys have any particular favorite interviews, either that you did yourself or that you listened to? I love talking with Max McLean. And when I reached out, um, the Max was an acquaintance of many years, but um, he said, oh, I don't really give interviews, but for, for you, I do anything, which was uh, incredibly kind. And um, then his uh, one of his folks said, well, he only has 30 or 45 minutes. And you know, and I was hoping for some more time, but he was incredibly generous and quick to make it happen, and and friendly, and and uh, just in, in in all the all the best ways. Um, how I have always known Max to be, so that was great fun. And then just uh, chatting with um, uh, Gordon Greenhill um, and uh, Steve Beebe about book collecting was just great fun. And I loved uh, Greenhill's, uh, he calls them slushy. I like slushy paperbacks. Um, yeah. He doesn't want the first editions or anything. He wants the the obscure ones. And I just found a copy, of, a cover of Screwtape that he didn't know and uh, and sent him a link on, on on eBay. So, And as we speak, I'm still chatting with Phil Keggy. I just had a text from him two days ago about maybe doing one about um, the roar of love. Uh, so those have been fun to visit with some old friends about things that I really love. How about you, Matt? Well, I feel like this is a trap, especially if any of the people we interview listen to our podcast. <laughs> this is like 
the late late show with uh james gordon Mm -hmm. he does this thing like spill your guts or fill your guts which is where you have to eat something and he'll ask sometimes celebrities and on the movie who is your favorite person to work with on that movie and who's your least favorite and of course they never answer it so they eat the thing that they have to eat because you just can't do that Mm -hmm. and i feel like that right here i mean i can't pick one of the people i interviewed and said oh they were my favorite (laughs) So I'm honestly not going to give an answer. They were all lovely, and thank you, all of them, for agreeing to talk with me. Coward. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> yes. Yes. He pushed the bail button, didn't he? <laughs> he did. It's like when, which is your favorite Narnie book? Oh, whichever one I've read most recently. It's like, no, that is not an answer. Sorry. <laughs> but a highlight for people that want to. I mean, I interviewed Dr. Hal Poe, so go check that out. It was a lovely one. Learned a ton about Lewis's life that I had no idea. Probably why David gave me that one. Um, and then the Habits for Holiness. Father Mark Mary was a delight. Then the early church fathers, you know, Voices of the Early Church. Uh, that was incredible with Dr. D'Ambrosio. Uh, those are a few of the recent ones. They're they're lovely. Go check them all out. And actually on that point, I've got uh, an early church episode scheduled for next season because scheduled. Mike Aquilina has just released a book on the fathers and friendship. So during our month looking at Philia, uh, we're going to be talking to him. Oh, fantastic. Mm, well done. Well, and I think there's a lot for just about everybody in the podcast and the interviews. And so I think it's been a feast for certainly for me to be a part of. And I hope that uh, that our listeners have felt the same. Yeah. And I love Dr. Chris Armstrong's as well, by the way. I don't want to leave that out. I think that was my fourth one I did. Ah, yeah. I, yeah. I, in my notes, that was one of, I think it's probably the favorite one that you did that I've listened to thus far. And for myself, I, we just had so many fun interviews, like Marilyn the Librarian, uh, Brooke, who I just randomly met on Twitter, just wanted to gush about Lewis for an hour, uh, <laughs> hang out with Paul McCusker was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I am really psyched that we got our first Metropolitan on the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was cool. I, I appreciate that one as well. Was um, Dr. Lampert, or I mean, uh, Father Lampert, the, was he this season or was that last season? That was this season. Yep. That was cool as well to be able to have a, a priest who does exorcists in the chat and on her YouTube channel. That's the one that's like 10 times the views of any of our other videos, if not 20 times. People just constantly keep going to that one. That's yeah. great. <laughs> well, we've uh, we've talked about some of the the uh, esteemed and distinguished guests that we've had, but um, I think that we also share admiration and esteem for our listeners, especially uh, and are especially thankful for those who have taken the time to leave us some iTunes reviews. That of course helps our 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 rubrics and and all the rest. But um, mostly, it's just a, it's a joy to hear from you. Um, so thank you to everyone who's left us a review. And uh, this is one that really caught my eye. So um, somebody called, is that Bar-Jonah? It, I'm pretty sure it's Ban-Jonah, Ban-Jonah? but Bar-Jonah okay. would be a little bit more biblical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's what he said. Uh, here's what they said. I love this podcast. I've been an on and off podcast listener for a few years, but never found one that felt homey or that I feel felt connected to. Then along comes Pints with Jack, and I can't get enough. Your passion for Christ is inspiring, and from that, you have such a, a great and true perspective of Lewis. I love the guests and the general fervor for Lewisian ideas. I feel like I have gotten to know some really great and inspiring people through this podcast. It's very educational. Even I sound like a pro when I refer- when I reference alcohol. And as a Southern boy, alcohol has been kind of foreign to my family. So LaCroix and Earl Grey is as far as my knowledge goes. So thank you, Pints with Jack, for the camaraderie and the discussions. So that was a Isn't lovely one to read. Yes. <laughs> And we also have a listener, uh, or the same listener included some some haikus, and so we'll share a little poetry. Um, confused by Lewis, you should be listening to pints. I sure know my rights. Uh, <laughs> and all days are today. God's the lens of all that's good. This moment is all. So, mm, which do you think his favorite book is? Mm. <laughs> well, it's certainly not Lewis's favorite book, so you know, we know that. Matt, um, take the next one. I have one that I think I'm going to try and pull up on the fly. I like this one because she was probably greatly disappointed after she um, continued listening to us. And I'll explain that in a second. But this was this was left by Kathy Reed, seventy four, and it was entitled "Outstanding." I just listened to part one of the Silver Chair. Well done. I love this book and thought I knew it well. 
You brought much to my understanding. I continue to recommend this podcast to everyone. I love that each person brings, I love what each person brings to this conversation. You're an essential part of my week. Thank you for all your work. Blessings to you. See, the issue is we all know she enjoyed Christine. Like she's going to be disappointed when she realizes she was only here for two episodes. And uh, <laughs> uh, Kristen, sorry. Sorry, Kathy, after you realize that it's just us three now. And the real <laughs> heavy lifter on that one was Andrew's wife. Well, you know, um, by this time, my wife, uh, by the time this airs, my wife will have gotten her doctorate um, from from Northwind Seminary. So I imagine that we can get Dr. Ditchfield on again to talk about Narnia. Uh, I, uh, yes. I think that I may have some pull and she doesn't even cost scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I did find the one that I was looking for, uh, Dr. Professor Melissa Kane Travis, who taught for years in the Cultural Apologetics Program at Houston Baptist University, and who I finally met in person at the Lewis Retreat a couple of years ago, um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually on the day of uh, St. Mary the Virgin, August 15th. Um, she quoted a line, um, uh, something that I didn't even remember that I said, uh, God can change the world through a handful of people loving the things they love. And she said, I was so encouraged by that statement. Thank you for doing what you do. Uh, and that was from the Learning with C.S. Lewis, uh, Pines with Jack. So uh, people are out there are listening. So what else do you have, Matt? Well, clearly she was not the only one that liked your wife, Andrew. <laughs> this one says, we must bring her back as a part of this podcast. Uh, she said, I'm actually re-listening to both parts one and two. And I'm telling people if they get within arm's length of me, that if they listen to one podcast this year, that this two-part series should be it, both for the intellectual stimulation or f and for the essential spiritual life content. See, that's what that's what... Your wife, she, she just did so well in bringing that. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Like the the gift that she was in terms of connecting it to the heart and the emotion and the and the scripture and our spiritual journeys. It was so nourishing just listening to it. Because listeners, I wasn't expecting that. That was my first time do, recording uh, with Kristen. And it was like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. It's so much fun to speak with her because, you know, I do the lofty, you know, intellectual, you know, literary stuff. And, and my wife is a genius, but she really wants to always keep it real and and wants always to, to kind of bring it down to the scripture and how we can live that out. And that's my heart, too. And that's part of why I married her. And so I'm so glad that that this incredible gift that I get to live with every day uh, resonates with so many of you. <laughs> what about you, David? I'll take a line from this next one. It's by the wonderfully named Invincibly Ignorant. Uh, it says, David almost seems overprepared for these discussions. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> which, which is why I underprepare, because I feel like it offsets it. Um, I just underprepare because I'm lazy. <laughs> And you're doing about five degrees. Well, I well yeah, I, you know, I, I I am managing to keep busy, but uh, but this has been part of um, part of where my time has gone this year, and and I'll never forget that. I mean, I think that it's such a joy. Um, I can remember many times in my apartment here and on campus, um, listening all the way through great divorce uh, season, and then uh, doing the work with you until we have faces. All of that was while I was here, and so um, what a joy. So next up, we have a review from Mark My Words Limited in Great Britain, but it may have also been written by David's mother. David has a brilliant radio voice and manner in the classic BBC style. He really knows his Lewis and isn't afraid to have an opinion. <laughs> no, no, he's not. <laughs> yes, he's over prepared. <laughs> no, he is, and and no, not not afraid to uh, to be opinionated, and that's part of what makes these things so good. I think, listeners, David does not need that. <laughs> so, anyone who's thinking of sending another thing like that, we don't we don't need that. Not not necessary. Well, and listeners, we record our backup uh, by a, 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 on a, on a website called Zencaster, so it's kind of like Zoom. So uh, I'm I have the advantage of looking at these lovely faces, and I can tell you that after hearing that praise, David looks very good in red. <laughs> <laughs> Little blush. Well, this next review is by user Navanshold, and is entitled "A Good Infection." I was introduced to Lewis years ago by reading Mere Christianity with a dear friend. We studied, drank tea or beer, and prayed. 
I was hooked. I moved away, and many years later, a few years ago, we decided to read and discuss writings by Christian authors via video conference each week. We started with another reading of Mere Christianity. I am new to the city of, in which I live and have been thinking about starting a small group. Until recently, Pints with Jack didn't pop up on my searches for Lewis podcasts, but when I finally found it, I was inspired to ask someone, to ask some friends to read and discuss meaningful Christian books. We are starting with, you guessed it, Mere Christianity, and have included beer, bourbon, or scotch, and an occasional cigar on special occasions. Your podcast not only provides helpful insights and and clear descriptions, you provide a model of Christian brotherhood. However, I predict that Matt is going to provide David a verbal beatdown of apocalyptic proportions. (laughs) Whoa, this is great. I didn't read this at a time. If the topic of cheesy movies comes up again... Yes. Any chance I can to bring a verbal beat down on David, he needs it from time to time. Just a little smack. The chap's a little bit, uh, you know, full of himself. We'll see. But he's a papist, so, you know, we can let that one go. (laughs) In addition to reading a page from A Year with C.S. Lewis every morning, I listen to you during my short 25-minute commute. Your episodes are the perfect length of time. I repeat the episode on the way home. Thanks for helping me start and end my workday. My life and those of the people who I interact with are enriched greatly. Your influence is greater than you realize. Peace. Well, I like that. <laughs> Wonderful. And I will, you know, I can I can uh, help with that prediction and potentially make that It'll never happen. <laughs> uh, but I do love how uh, group reading is is essential to this person's life. And it's one of the things I'm excited about now that I've changed states. I get to start a new C.S. Lewis reading group. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, and for years I was so hungry for for good talk about Lewis that I started a group uh, that has since lapsed, but I don't know, we may start that again once I find my way to a parish. But it was called um, the Caffeinated Lamppost Society. And so every couple of weeks we would get together and I'd brew a proper pot of English tea, hotting the pot and all the rest. Uh, And then I would pull out my Winnie the Pooh tea time cookbook because one of my favorite things in books is, uh, is food. And so I collect all these literary cookbooks. Um, And I would bake a little honey cake and we'd have the caffeinated lamppost society. So uh, occasionally we'd drink beer and then it would become the carbonated lamppost society, but that's a different story. (laughs) Um, But maybe someday again. Well, a little little while ago, we mentioned that you can now listen to Pints of Jack on Audible. And we've had a couple of lovely reviews left for us there. And if you're on Audible, we would, we would uh, encourage you, if you're so well, so moved, to, uh, to leave a review. This is what Claire Winter said. Um, her review is called Chatty and Accurate, which could be my epitaph on my gravestone. But you'd have to add humble, chatty, accurate, and humble. <laughs> yeah. Sorry that this review might not help people not already familiar with the works of C.S. Lewis. I've read his work for years and greatly appreciate the emergence of this wonderful podcast discussing it. The setting is clever, referencing Lewis's own regular meetings with beloved friends at the Eagle and Child Pub in the UK. The presenters clearly are friends in the same mold, both supporting and challenging each other with lots of banter and teasing thrown in. That doesn't diminish uh, the value of the content, however, because amidst their good cheer, the presenters, to my judgment, accurately convey what Lewis wrote. For anyone struggling to understand Lewis's work, this podcast is an excellent tool. And if you understand Lewis's work all too well and find application overwhelming, this podcast will support you and the Fellowship of Kindred Strugglers. Since this is really a, po- a really positive in- uh, review, let me say that I am way older than the presenters and have never met them. So I think I'm impartial. Thanks. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure about way older because if you were way older than me, Claire, you'd be dead. <laughs> so, but uh, we thank you for that review, and and uh, it's so it's so pleasing to know that what we strive for is actually coming across to some of you. So, thank you for taking the time. Here's a second review on Audible. Um, someone using the the username Happily Disabled Mom wrote a review with the title "Life Changing." Well, uh, lovely. Or I'm sorry, loved it. Well done. Friendly and engaging. Compelling. My heart is on fire as on the road to Emmaus. Well, that's high praise indeed. And so we thank you, happily disabled mom, and to all of the all of you who have found us one way or the or another. And we encourage you to reach out. It would be lovely to to connect with you. Matt, what do you have from iTunes? 
Yeah, uh, Pearland wrote, for someone who does not have a lot of time to read, this podcast is a great way to learn about great literature. And the one truth in that statement is Lewis is great yeah. literature. Kimberly L., because I don't want to butcher that last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Greek to me. <laughs> or Czech. Uh, <laughs> Right. I absolutely love this podcast. I'm a huge Narnia fan. And recently, I've been going through as many Lewis books as I can. I love the insight and the fun in every episode of this podcast. And I shared it with my mom, who loved it as well. I'm excited for the next season. Cheers. You know, there's there's no higher praise than sharing it with your mother. <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's fantastic. And lastly, from Kimber24, thanks so much for making C.S. Lewis even more enjoyable to read, which I thought couldn't be possible. Mm. You're welcome. Wow. High praise. Well, I think uh, our heads are now big enough, uh, and we should get on to the final section uh, of this episode. Because uh, I said at the beginning of the episode that we would be reviewing one more final piece of Screwtape material. And... Today, I want to talk about the different audiobook versions of the Screwtape Letters. And I went looking for a, as many versions that, as I could find. And the main ones seem to be one by John Cleese, one by Ralph Cosham, one by Joss Ackland, Stuart Crank, and Andy Serkis. So I sent you guys links in anticipation of this episode. So I'm sure you've listened to some of these before. Uh, what are your thoughts? Matt, what did you think? Did you have a chance to, yeah. to listen to those? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't like the name John Cleese. I think Ralph's name isn't great. Stuart Clark. I'm going to just go with Andy Serkis because that's a cool name. No, I did not listen to a single one of these. This is part of being underprepared. Uh, I kind of, being on vacation right now, I kind of assume this is going to be one of those episodes where David's got all together and I'm just going to pop in and do my colored commentary. <laughs> Little did I know there was work for me to do hey, ahead of how's time. How's that different from you not being on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> it's not i just don't have the excuse <laughs> well done well done okay well matt you matt you drink you drink your drink andrew and i are gonna talk grown up talk for about five to ten minutes and then we'll circle back to you and you can do the sign off how's that uh, you know it. i've listened to these versions for years and i had huge hopes for john cleese who of course is in monty python um and has done marvelous comedic work. And if anybody could really have captured the sardonic cynicism of him, um, mm. I, I, I hoped that it would have been him. But uh, I listened to the whole thing years ago. I had the CDs and, and put them on my computer and would put around the house. Um, he just kind of seems bored uh, about halfway through. And it seems kind of like he's doing a job of work. Uh, mm. So he doesn't really have the investment. Um, and so while I like hearing his voice and while it's many people's favorite version, I kind of felt like the spirit lagged a little with Cleese. He does very much embody though the bureaucrat. I think that's the, that's the big vibe I get from his version, that this is a middle manager. He is just trying to be efficient. And in some ways, I actually quite like the fact that this seems like a bit of a chore for him because he doesn't want to bother talking to his nephew. Even the whole thing just seems to be just, ugh, his heart, his heart doesn't seem to be in it. <laughs> I think that's just you sticking up for a Brit. <laughs> well, well, he actually was a Grammy Award finalist for that particular work. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, and there are certainly flashes of exactly that. And, you know, I mean, Cleese has got talent to burn. And so there are really, really lovely moments where you go, oh, that's exactly what screw tape would have sounded like. But, um, but mm. I don't, I didn't get the feeling that, uh, that, he kind of embodied that and sustained that all the way through. And part of what I want to do is forget that it's John Cleese, right? Yeah. I want him to disappear into the role and embody that role. And it never quite happened for me. It is kind of like Basil Fulty just going to hell, <laughs> trying <laughs> to if, run his hotel. As if Fulty <laughs> Towers isn't hellish enough. <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing about the Cleese version – I reached out to all of the publishers of these different versions, basically trying to get permission to include a clip in the show and have not have them sue me. I can't find out who owns this John Cleese version anymore. Hmm. I put a lot of work into that one. Complete dead end. Well, listeners, if you happen to know, that would be, we'd love to hear that. Um, I, similarly, uh, th there's that wonderful picture of Lewis smoking his pipe 
you know, with the, the it's on the back cover of Till We Have Faces. And um, I've tried for years. Uh, I think the photo was done by John S. Murray, maybe for Life magazine or or something. Tried for years to find out who the copyright holder of that uh, is. And and so there are lots of question marks still in Lewis studies. But listeners, if you know uh, who owns the Cleese um, uh, permissions, let us know. What did you think about um, Ralph Cosham? He has done so much C.S. Lewis audio work. I actually now associate his voice with C.S. Lewis. Yeah. If you go on Audible, there's 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 that big purchase that you can make. It's it's relatively cheap, but you've got something ridiculous, like three days worth of audio of C.S. Lewis. Yeah. And it's his voice, and he's done pretty much all of the other works. So I definitely associate his voice with C.S. Lewis, but it just seemed to me like a not quite so engaging version of Glee's. Yeah. It seems a little workmanlike and perhaps a little dull. Um, mm. And so, and the accent is enough different. Lewis, of course, has got this melange of a couple of different accents. In fact, uh, he would, I read somewhere him talking, I think in a letter, about how when he would come back to Northern Ireland, he would jump in a cab using full Oxonian kind of upper crust uh, scholar uh, professor accent. And then halfway through the cab ride would turn to a low Irish brogue just to <laughs> screw with the cabbie. Um, <laughs> and Kasham doesn't have, I think, either the Oxonian or the, uh, or the, um, the, 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 the Irish. And so it's a British accent, which kind of works for me. And yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but I think you're totally right. You know, he does a lot of, of Lewis's books. Now, Joss Ackland's version. So oh. Joss, he played Lewis in Shadowlands. So yes. I already had that association there. Um, and he's he's been in a bunch of movies that I love, including Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, uh, Hunt for Red October, and Lethal Weapon 2. I love his deep, gravelly voice. Yes. Uh, his was the first audio version of Screwtape I listened to repeatedly. Yeah. Well, and I agree. Let me clarify. There were two versions of Shadowlands and the BBC version um, mm -hmm. with uh, starred Joss Ackland and Claire Bloom. It actually stuck a little closer to Bill Nicholson, William Nicholson's play script. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, for my money, if you're going to watch Shadowlands, the BBC version is the one to watch. You can still track it down on DVD. And I, I think even one of the streaming services has it. Um, mm -hmm. But Joss Ackland, yes, has got this big, deep, booming voice, and he really leans into the performance of it. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, I really, I really love that. Well, the next one was Stuart Crank, and I hadn't come across his version prior to this season when I actually went looking for what versions are out there. I quite liked it. Uh, his version of Screwtape is a little bit more snooty. He's a little bit above it all. He's very filled. He, he's very full of himself. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's certainly a way to play it. I, I found him a little bit too stagey. Um, mm. And the screw tape letters as an audiobook, I don't think should be staged unless like the next one that we're going to talk about, it's an actual staging. And so for my money, Joss, uh, Joss Ackland still, still stuck out. Um, I think if you need audiobooks and like audiobooks, any version allowed is going to work. But um, sure. But I don't know if that was the best one. Um, and before we get on to our final one, I have to say that the version that stuck out to me the most is not actually an audiobook, but I can't help but hear <laughs> Max McLean. Yeah. Um, I and I love that. Brent Harris's screw tape. Brent does a marvelous job, and I've I've seen that performance many times um in Houston when I did the talkbacks for screw tape. That was it was great to get to know Brent a little bit. Um, but Max. Um, really kind of knows who screw tape is, and I think that he combines a lot of these great things. And so if he did a whole audiobook of it, I think that might be the one that I would buy. But uh, who did we save for last and who do uh, and what do you think of him, David? We save for last uh, the Andy Circus version. Uh, he is the guy that played Gollum in all of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. Precious. And I remember when I first saw this advertised, and I was incredibly cynical about it. I just saw it as a cash-in on the success of Lord of the Rings. However, I have to admit, it's just wonderful. Uh, Focus on the Family do wonderful radio productions. And his is definitely a different take on screw tape. He's less of a bureaucrat and much more menacing and intimidating. Uh, and... Actually, as we drove from California to Wisconsin, my wife and I listened to Andy Serkis' version of The Hobbit as, mm -hmm. as we drove. And 
his screw tape, it's somewhere between Gollum and Smaug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, there, there, there is the intensity of Smaug. You know, th- this is a dragon who will eat you and burn your house down. Uh, but yeah. there is, there's also, there's, there's something a little bit more complex mixed in there as well. Uh, and I'm actually really pleased to say that I received permission from folks on the family to include a clip of that version of the screw tape letters at the end of this show. Ah, uh, fantastic. Well, and I think that you're wise to bring up focus on the family. They, of course, did the dramatization of the Chronicles of Narnia and did a mm. fantastic job with that. And so their productions of Lewis's works have been first rate, in my opinion. Um, and so what I said about uh, about Andy Circus is that if you can't see the FPA version, if you can't see Brett, Brent Harris um, or Max McLean doing the screw tape letters on stage, um, the dramatic uh, way that Circus performs and that Focus on the Family presents uh, that book, fantastic. Mm. And you can get those audio CDs, and and I think that they're certainly well worth the money. So big fan of, of Andy Circus. And I just heard that there was some kind of GoFundMe or something, and uh, Andy Circus is going to record the whole Lord of the Rings. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> so uh, I think that that's just going to be fantastic. So in summary, I think I would say uh, Joss Ackland, if you want to just really dig into the text and listen to the screw tape that I hear in my head, go with his version. Uh, if you want to shake things up a little bit, go with Andy Circus, And you definitely do encounter the text afresh because they do, they do some very clever little little touches uh, that just, just change, changes the book just a little bit, or at least the way that I'd always received it. Yep, and I would agree. I would go Ackland for the audiobook and Circus for the um for the kind of dramatization and mm. um, certainly FPA if you can if you can find your way to a performance. Hi Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am back. And uh yeah, hi guys. How are you guys doing? Feels like it's been a while. And you know, we're gonna be wrapping up here, we're gonna be signing off. Uh, but I wanted us to just finish with one really recent review we got because it really touches on the inspiration of why we do this. It's of course it's out of a love for Lewis, but there's a deeper cause. Lewis is a means to an end. Um, sorry, Lewis, uh, but I think he'd be okay with that. And that end is is shining light on the beauty of Christianity and just taking advantage of Lewis's wisdom. So here's what this person wrote on iTunes: Jason Sands, great podcast. I've never been particularly religious. I wasn't brought up in the church, but recently I have embarked on a journey of spiritual exploration. I love the hosts and their interactions, and they're going and they are great guides as I read the works of C.S. Lewis. Well, Jason, if you stumble across this and you made it through an <laughs> hour and five minutes of us just really talking about nonsense, uh, we will just let you know that you will constantly be in our prayers on that journey and the exploration, wherever that leads you. Uh, I always just love when people are on a journey towards truth and, and seeking that truth. And I think that is just so beautiful. So thank you for that review and thank you for listening to our podcast. We appreciate that. And uh, as we wrap this up, we want to thank our, our top tier Patreon supporters and all of them in general. Uh, and this list has been growing. Don, Sterling, Shane, John, Kevin, Brian, Kay, Monique, Paul, Kimberly, Gillis, Gary, Stephen, Matt, Jeff, Kelly, Chris, John, James, Kate, Rowdy. Remember when that was like three people to start, David? <laughs> yeah. Oh, back in the day. Well, and I also mm-hmm. uh, just saw on social media, Annie Nardone was one of our new Patreon supporters. And I saw her with her pints, with, post a picture of her pints with Jack on top of a bunch of C.S. Lewis first editions. And so that felt uh, that felt like a, quite a victory because I sold her a bunch of those books. Um, so and Annie has been a good friend for, for a number of years. And so it was great to see her there. I love it. And a reminder, everyone, you can reach us on social media. Um, we're, we're so blessed with how uh, this ministry has grown and gotten large, but don't worry, it is not too large where we won't respond to uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Slack, uh, email, uh, contact at pintsofjack.com, Pints of Jack handles for any of the handled social medias. I don't know which ones have handles. Uh, but yeah, so check us out and all those guys. We love it. And on the website, you can pick up Pints with Jack, uh, the laser-edged uh, glass in preparation for season five. There's some merch out there. I'm a proud owner of a Pints with Jack t-shirt that I got not as swag for being part of the show, but uh, as a gift from my family. I put it on my my wish list last Christmas. And <laughs> and uh, so there's lots of merch to uh, to, to join, us, uh, join us and celebrate with us. 
And be sure to stick around after the sign-off for the officially sanctioned clip of Andy Serkis' Focus on the Family rendition of Screwtape. And join us for our final episode on Thursday. When we'll be going further up. And further in. Cheers. 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 There. Everything looks tasty, if I may say so. I do hope the meat isn't dry, John. You know I don't like it overcooked. I know, Mum, don't worry. If I'd known you'd be so late coming home from church... Well, I can't always know how long Reverend Blanchet is going to preach, can I? It's not as if I can stand up and shout, Pardon me, Reverend, but could you cut it short? My mother's waiting for me at home and the roast is burning in the oven. Oh. Please pass the gravy. I only meant that we've been eating later and later on Sundays, and the meat has been drier and drier since you've been in this church phase. Phase? Please, Mum, let's not be condescending about it. Well, I don't know what else to call it. Then don't call it anything. Would you like some Yorkshire pudding? If it's not too much trouble. It's not too much trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Mmm, yeah. I thought you'd be pleased. Mm, I am. But you must press home your advantage. My advantage? The enemy will be working on the patient from the center outwards, gradually bringing more and more of his conduct under the new standard of his Christianity. It may reach his behavior to the old lady at any moment. Look, Mum, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap. It's all right, dear. Ah, you see... You want to get in first. Where is Globos? She's hiding in the carcass of a dead mouse behind the wall. She heard you were coming. Well, you you do sort of make her nervous. Rightfully so. She was never the best of students. In any event, keep in close touch with her, since she is in charge of the mother. Build up between your patient and the mother a good settled habit of mutual annoyance. Hmm? Daily pinpricks? Pinpricks. Many thanks to Focus on the Family for allowing us to use this short clip from their radio theatre production of The Screwtape Letters, starring Andy Serkis. If you would like to purchase the entire product, please go to store.focusonthefamily.com.